That sound coming through? Oh, there he is. Hey. What's up, brother? How you doing, loved one? Man, I'm good. You getting right? I stay right. You know I had to get right before talking to you, man. I couldn't come <laughs> on there halfway together. Oh, it's all good, man. I got my <laughs> I got my whole crew waiting on me to drink a little drink a little whiskey tonight. So that's what ready you, you, you on you on that whiskey? Yeah, man. You know that that, that other stuff. I eat too much. <laughs> <laughs> I I ain't got the I ain't got those good genes like you, brother. I got the I blow up like a marshmallow. <laughs> I got I got that Indian blood, so when I drink whiskey, I turn it to something different. Yeah, well, I'm good as long as it's whiskey. Now, if it's tequila or anything like that, then it, it, you might as well just leave me alone. Cause yes, sir. It's gonna be a long night for somebody. You better know it. So, <laughs> man, you are coming up on your thirtieth anniversary tomorrow. Thirty, man, that's unbelievable. You've had a hell of a career. You are the godfather of this thing, man. We love you, man. Well, I appreciate that, man. You, you, you're the godfather. Hey, you got your own deal. You got 27 coming up uh, for Doggy Style, what, Monday? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, you know, we might as well celebrate together, you know what I'm saying? The Undertaker hey. with the dog. Yeah, game knows game, brother. In a real way. In a real way. That collab we did look good. I like them shirts, man. Hey, I'm really happy how they, they turned out, man. I, I, I've got the, I got the plain, simple logo tonight. You know, I got to rock us, rock us both. I got to represent the both of us right there. There you go. Yeah, that, that looks good, man. That purple looks, that's, that's popping, man. I heard you was a, a bike collector because, you know, I'm a car collector. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, you know, I, I had some, jeez. I think at one time I had like 15 bikes and then I was just like, <laughs> I was like, damn, I can't ride but one at a time. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh. Yeah, th th you know, those bikes beat you up, and I was already getting beat up enough, so. What's your you favorite know? bike? I tell you what, Jesse built me, uh, Jesse James built me this West Coast Chopper back in the day, man. It was stretched out. I called it the Ghost. It was pearl white, had uh, had these sick-ass flames and skulls on it. Like, you know, Je and nobody builds a bike like Jesse James, right? Jesse uh, James. You know, another Long Beach guy. And, uh <laughs> He, uh, that thing, that thing was wicked, brother. It was, uh, yeah, it was nice, man. I hear, you, wait, I, I hear you got a, I hear you got a, you got a car that's, uh, got a pretty interesting name, man. What's that all about? Yeah, Tell me about the Undertaker. Hey, man, the Undertaker is special, man. It's, it's like, it looked like a hearse, but it's, it's just, it just feel like you. My homie named it, you know what I'm saying? When he seen it, he was like, this motherfucker's the Undertaker. I'm like, you're right. It just felt like you, you know what I'm saying? It's like, it's cold, it's, 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 it shows up when it has to, and it's always big when necessary. Oh, man, I love it, man. Uh, I saw, I did, I, I saw I saw a picture of it, brother. It's, uh, that's just tight, man. That's like one of my favorite, hey, one of my favorite shirts is the, uh, is the mural uh, in the hearse. That's, that's next level right there for you, man. You need to, you need to do a hearse. You need to do a hearse lowrider. Don't I'm, say I'm it. Don't be, say it. I'm going to come pick you up in that motherfucker. Don't say it. Hey, hey, come on. Let's go. <laughs> well, we got a whole back end to fill up. Yeah, my car, man, you listening. You hear this shit. We need that hearse lowrider. Put the switches on it. Drop him in the back. Lift him in the front. <laughs> that catch some looks, brother. That catch some looks. Some real good looks. <laughs> So I want I want to talk about a couple of uh, matches when you was on top of that cage and you threw Cuz off that cage, man. How high was that cage? Uh that one that that one was I don't know what, fifteen foot, I think. It, yeah, it was. Hey, it it was too tall to be getting thrown off of. I can tell you that. That's it. Was better. <laughs> it was better to be the thrower than the throwee. <laughs> <laughs> And then I was at the one that night when you was on the on the ground, and he thought he was gonna jump on you, and you got up right in time. Oh, that was uh, that was in Texas Stadium, right? Yeah, I was there. Yeah, that now that one that one was twenty foot. That one was uh, the way you moved, the way you got up. It was like a split second, dude. Dude, when you see somebody coming from twenty <laughs> foot up, you can move. <laughs> Even my big ass will move. I was like, uh-uh, I'm not going to be here when he lands. I got to go. 
Man, looking back at all of the WrestleManias, which one like sticks out to you? Because I know it's certain records that I made and certain things that are monumental. Which one sticks out to you the most? Uh, it, it has to be. I mean, if you go narrow it down to one, it's got to be twenty WrestleMania twenty five with Shawn Michaels, man. Mm. Uh, you know, that you, I'm sure you experience the same thing when you know when you're putting music together, or whatever you're into. You just know when it's, you know, when it's clicking, right? Right. And that night, I tell you what, there, I mean, everything, everything was just perfect. And, uh, you know, you had that incredible, that incredible energy coming out of the crowd. And, uh, you know, Sean was at the top of his game. And, and uh, you know, I mean, we were locked, we were zoned, man, we were in the zone. That's, a, that's the best example I can ever give anybody of somebody being in the zone was that night in Houston, WrestleMania 25, man. It was, uh, that was the shit. We get that athletes, entertainers, we all get that zone. When we get in that zone, it's like it's hard to explain, but we all get it, and we know when we're in it. Yeah, and, it, and it, you know, it's kind of like chasing that dragon, too, because once you, once you hit it once. You want it again. You want it again, right? And right. Uh, you don't always get it, but you always, you always strive to get it, and that's what I think kind of keeps us, you know, that's why you're still, after all these years, at the top of the game, and everybody wants a little piece of Snoop, and that's how I've, lo that's how I've lasted because I've always – you know, I don't care what I've done, I can still do more. And right. that's what kind of, you know, you, if you don't have that mentality, you, you ain't going to make it. You're just going to be a, you're going to be a one hit wonder. Or you're going to be an afterthought. So, right. So who do you think right now? Cause they always ask me like, who do you think you could like pass the baton to or who you think that's doing something great? Like you were doing at your age that you feel could take the industry that you were in to another level. Man, I tell you what, um, and it has nothing to do with gimmicks or anything like that, but I really I, I enjoy what The Fiend is doing, man. He's like that, that 2020, he's like that 1990 Undertaker. He's catching everybody off guard and doing stuff that people aren't used to seeing. Right. Uh, you know, and, and what he's doing is real savvy, too. It's real, you know, it's, it's, it's deep and, uh, you know, thought-provoking. And if you can do that, you know, I mean, everybody, you know, everybody can wrestle. You know, but you got to be able to captivate people's imagination. You got to have them invested in what you're doing. And wow. uh, you know, it, if you don't have that, you just you just going out there tearing your body up, and you ain't gonna be there long. But uh, I, I'm real excited about what he's doing, and uh, I think I think he's uh, you know he he's that next level guy. I love that. How do you feel about female wrestlers? Because my little cousin Sasha Banks, I took her to <laughs> WrestleMania years ago. And she fell in love with it, and now she is a wrestler. And I'm watching the women do their thing. How do you feel about the women in the wrestling industry? Man, she's killing it. She she's straight <laughs> killing it. And that whole division, man. Uh, you know, my wife, my wife was uh, a wrestler, and she didn't. You know, they didn't put the the the, the you know the the interest in them at the that resources. time. But uh, you know, my wife, she fought like she fought like man every day trying to get that just that extra minute or just that little bit of recognition and it's so nice to see the women now they're getting and, and to, to main event wrestlemania and yes. to main event all this stuff and deliver yes and that's the thing right and deliver that stuff you know with sasha and bailey man that was that's good stuff man yeah. i don't care if you're a man or a woman that's just that's just good good story good good action you know it's 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 top level man but right? I got no problem with it at all. I love it. I love to see that the industry can grow and that the women can bring it. You know, don't just give an opportunity, but when they get the opportunity, they make the most of it. And yeah, they, they have, it. yeah. For sure, man. Right. So what's your record at WrestleMania? Uh, well, let's see. Let's see. I want 21, 22, 23 and 2. 23 and 2. I went, 20, I went 21 and 0, and then Brock got me. And then uh, I, I squeezed out another victory, and then Roman Roman go ahead, went ahead and kind of put it on me a little bit too. So, damn that but, uh, that twenty and O was special. That twenty one and O. Yeah, it was. Uh, it, you know, it, it kind of took on a life of its own, right? I mean, there was like, okay, here's the main event, but who's going after the street? Right. Who won't that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, I, I, if you don't get the main event, like if you don't win the Rumble, I mean, that was that was the next thing guys won. Like, I want, I want Undertaker. I want to try and get the streak. And uh, you know, she's 
it was just uh it put me in a great position uh you know so i didn't have to always take up or you know take up both those spots because i you know it was it was an entity all to itself so yeah it, it, it was cool man it was uh you know you know, everybody, you know, everybody loses sometimes, man. Bro, <laughs> you know, that's, that's part it, of life. It is what it is, man. Hey, it ain't a loss. It's a lesson. Everybody takes an L. It's just a lesson. We learn how to yeah, do it better. Absolutely. Now. Absolutely. You got to keep, you always got to keep, keep learning and keep growing. And, uh, it, you know, it made me adapt to, to what I was doing. And, uh, yeah, that's a, that's a great, that's, I'm going to use that, man. I'm going to steal that. Well, you take a loss, it it's a lesson. It's a lesson. That's all it is. Yeah, you know Snoop what? Snoop Dogg the poet. <laughs> You know what's crazy is that when I'm when I'm out and about and I see fans that that like me or recognize me and it's like it's not what you expect. Do you get that when you see fans that aren't what you expect? Like, wow, I didn't know that people like that really love me and really like genuinely know everything about me. You know, it's funny that you mentioned that because you know now I've been obviously you know I did the the documentary and everybody's kind of got a little peek behind the curtain because I didn't I didn't share anything with anybody for you know, all those years. So I'm out there a little bit more now with, with, with my fans. And uh, it, it's crazy. Some of the stories that I hear, like how I affected their lives and the things that they were going through personally and, and telling me like, you know, the only reason I got through all that because I knew on Monday night, all I, I was going to get the chance to watch, you know, that's some heavy, that's heavy shit, man. To, to know that you, you know, I, I think a lot of times, Artists and athletes, they, they take for granted the effect that they have on people and how much they mean to people. And uh, it, it's so humbling, brother, just to have somebody break down and just start crying, telling me their life story and how, you know, they would come from this kind of household and this was going on. But, you know, we had TV and on, Friday, on Monday and Friday nights, you know, it was all about watching you. And it was just like, damn, man. So and, the it, it, and the beauty is that, you, me, and people like us who get that position, we end racism because we bring all walks of people together for one cause. Absolutely. And they don't know how to they don't know how to hate each other when they love the same thing. You know what I'm saying? So Yeah, that that, that that's great because you know, if, if you're a fan a wrestling fan, if you're a music fan, uh, yeah, that it, it unites, man, and that's that's what we need right now. There's just there's too much division. There's too much, you know. We can ha we can all have separate opinions on on who's doing what, right? But we still we're still people. We're all the same people, and uh, you know it's it, it's nuts because it used to be, I don't care what party you 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 could still have a conversation, right? Right, right. We're at a point now you can't have a conversation anymore, you know. And right. it's we we got we got to find more common ground. We got to find common ground in music. We got to find common ground in and in, in different genres of entertainment and quit being so divisive, man, because we're better than that. We're all better than that. I think and we, we got to, uh, you know, we got to, we got to use our platforms like, you know, not, not to spew one way or the other, but to unite. That's the, that's the thing. That's what we're doing right now. Ain't that beautiful? We're doing it. We're doing it. And it ain't even nobody made us do it. We're doing it because we want to do it. And it's just, it's what's necessary. Sometimes you must do what's necessary when you're in that position of power. You, you got to take it. Absolutely, man. I agree 100%. That's, that's, that's straight knowledge right there. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to pull you out of retirement for one more match, a tag team match with me and you. And I got to figure out who we're going up against. <laughs> All right. Well, 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 let's do this. We'll take, we'll, we'll take somebody. We'll take somebody from the music world, and we'll take somebody from the wrestling world. We'll do. We'll do. I'll do that. I'll come out of retirement for that in a heartbeat. I like that. I like that. that. And we're I've gonna been, do it at Mania too. When there's people in the crowd. Yeah, I've been working out, so I want to show off a little something I've been working on. <laughs> All right. I want to see that Snoop Shuffle. <laughs> Float like a butterfly and sting like a bee. Man, I love being in that ring, man. You just don't know what that means to be inside of that ring, man. That is a beautiful feeling, man. That's a lot of energy, isn't it, man? I mean, I know you get it. I mean, you performed in front of millions and millions of people. It's so. a diff it's a different wrestling energy is different because these people are diehards. And when you come into this world, if you ain't legit, they'll let you know. Yeah, quick. You me so it's like you know to be accepted and to be appreciated it means a lot because they know that 
I come from the days of Jimmy Superfly Snook, a junkyard dog, and, you know, way back in the days when my grandfather showed me about wrestling in the 70s. So right. I got a long tradition with it. So when I come in it, they know it's official. It ain't me just trying to, you know, be a part of a gimmick, but me really just loving the sport and loving the people that's in it and getting that same feeling back. Yeah, absolutely, man. I, I knew you were big time. I knew you were a big time fan when you showed up in, uh, uh, was it Orlando? <laughs> you, guys, you guys had the grill going. <laughs> now, I know part of what it, I know part of what the grill was about, but yeah. But I was like, damn, that man just—he come to WrestleMania, he just broke out the grill. That, <laughs> that's next level shit right there. <laughs> but look, that's the same day that I brought Sasha to her first wrestle. That's her first one ever. That's that's crazy, man. She was a little girl. She was like nine or ten years old. That's crazy. That's so crazy that's the happened. effect. That's the effect that. That's what I'm trying to say. Like out of my family, you wouldn't even expect that. But my little cousin fell in love with it because her father loved it so much, and we loved it so much to where she was like, you know what? Everybody in the family that couldn't be a wrestler, I'm about to go be one, and I'm gonna be a good one. Yeah. No, and she is, man. She she's she's on top of her game right now too. That's that's cool, man. I didn't I, I didn't know that was the event, but that that always stuck out in my head, man. <laughs> I, was, I was walking back, I was walking back to my dressing room and got that damn grill fired up, and I was like, "Damn, I'm hungry too." <laughs> that's awesome, man. That's, we gotta keep it real everywhere we go, dog. You know that we got. Hey, I know that. Yeah, ain't no, ain't no doubt, man. You that's that, what you, we proved that time and time again. Come on, man. Hey, you know what? All my friends call me the Undertaker of rap, man. Hey, they, hey, you could be, you could be called, you could be called a lot worse. <laughs> <laughs> that, you know why? Because that's because you buried everybody else, dude. That's a fact. That's a hey, fact. You hit buried them all, brother. And it ain't when anybody, I, 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 I don't know. I don't. I, you took nine out of ten people. You say rap. You're the name that comes to their mind first. I, I guarantee you. Wow. But I mean, that's just, I mean, you, you've crossed over so many different genres. The biggest thing is you've stayed relevant. You right. have st not, not relevant. You've stayed more than relevant. And to do that in your industry for 20, 27 years, dude, <laughs> I mean, hey, I mean, you, I, and I, I'm not, I'm not going to bad mouth anybody. But I mean, you got all the flavor of the weeks come out with one song, they get a little bit of play, and then they're gone. They're gone. You don't hear from them again, dude. Twenty-seven years, brother. Mm. That's mm. it. Hey. Hey, it ain't slowing down either. No, 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 no. no. We, just, we just putting our foot on the gas pedal. Just putting it on, and I, you know, I, I'm just trying to find a different car to drive because I didn't wore the brakes off this one. <laughs> 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 I got to, I got to, I got to channel in on some of that Snoop Dogg uh, spirit right there. Get some yeah. of that entrepreneurial skill. Yeah, I, I'm going to get with you on that. Show you how to, you know, diversify your portfolio. I like it, man. I like it. Yes, sir. You're proven. You're proven. That's why I respect that. There's a lot of people talk it. You proved it, man. Hey, man, I went out there and did it, man. I lost, I lost a lot. Took a couple of L's for lessons, and then I learned how to do it the right way. Hey. That, that's how you grow, man. That's that. Yeah. That's what people got to understand. You can't let the, you can't let the L's define you. Yeah. Right. 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 Cool, we're all going to take a few. You're going to take a few, but what you going to do to get back? And it's how you come back. Right. Mm. I want to give a shout out. Rest in peace to your manager, man. I loved, I loved him. Yeah. He was awesome, man. He was so perfect for, I, I, you know, he was so instrumental early on in the development of The Undertaker, you know, because I, I took a big roll of the dice and, you know, because I, I looked at everybody else and what they were doing. Everybody else was cutting that normal, well, let me tell you something, brother. Mm -hmm. You know, that over-the-top, loud, shouting shit, right? That's what everybody was doing. Actually, I, I know you identify with it because your sound, you were the one that, that laid back, chill, right? Yeah. You, were, you weren't angry? You were nah. You were chill, and that right. and that resonated with people, right? And right. it still does to this day. And and my approach was like, I'm gonna talk low, I'm gonna talk slow, and when you do that, 
what do people do? They, they pay they attention. They lean forward. They, wanna, they, they, they pay, pay attention, right? What's he saying? Right. Right? And then I had Paul Bear there, mm. who was the complete. He was fucking guy. off the hook. He was right? off the fucking chain. He, so it was such a cool mix of his high pitched, squealy voice. And then, you know, he, he gets you all worked up. And then you bring in the closer. Like, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take your ass and I'm going to bury you six feet under. And, I'm, you know, worms are going to eat your rotten soul. And people never like, did he just say that shit? No, he, he what? And that was just, you know, that's, but Paul, man, uh, back to your point, man, Paul's awesome. And I, I, you know, I owe him so much uh, just from the development early on. Um, you know, I, it hurt me. It, it hurt me when we split up, you know, it wasn't, that wasn't my idea. I thought we had a few years left before, you know, something like that. And it was going to happen. And, uh, and uh, he's just a good dude too, man. He was, he was just a good dude. Love, love to play a practical joke on a, on a brother, man. He was so funny. But uh, y'all yeah, had just, more, y'all had more great times than bad times. That's the key. Oh, that yeah, I, that, way more. Yeah, I, all my memories of Paul are fond, man. And, you See? know, and you got somebody that like that in your life. That, he was instru- he was instrumental to the creation of what you created. Yeah. Oh, absolutely, one hundred percent. You know, and it's funny. A lot of people don't know he's a legit. He was a legit mortician what oh, you didn't know that hell no <laughs> no brother check check this out so you know when i debuted back in 90 right uh brother love come out with me so at the time brother love is still working and, and, and writing some of the tv shows so he couldn't come out on the towns with me so they had to find me a manager <laughs> so so uh rick rude tells vince about this guy in dallas who was he was Percy Pringle at the time? Mm. He said he's a great manager, right? So they're interviewing him to be my manager. So and he's got no clue. So during the interview process, you know, Vince does this to everybody. He goes, "Well, you got any other kind of skills, or you know, do you 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 play music, or you do this, or you do that?" And Paul, you know, he goes, "Well, I'm a I'm a licensed mortician." <laughs> And the whole room just busts out laughing, right? Because they're looking for a manager for me. It was destiny, man. It was destiny. That's like a perfect fucking fit. I mean, are you kidding me? It was supposed to be. So, yeah, man. So he had that big, that bright, blonde wrestling manager hair. They they pitched, they made it pitch black. And next thing you know, man, he's Paul Bear, and the rest is history. That shit was magic. That now that's that's called a zone. Yeah, like we were talking about earlier. When you find that zone, even before it came to public attention, y'all knew that motherfucker was a zone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We knew uh, right away. You know what I'm we, saying? Yeah, right we, right, we knew right away. We 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 had something special, and uh, yeah, just so so fortunate, man. So 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 happy that uh, that, that that we got to do that together. That's funny that's enough. A great, that's a great partnership that created a lot of other partnerships. See, like you said earlier, you don't realize how much you influenced others. By, uh, by y'all doing what y'all did, y'all made others think yin-yang instead yeah. of having the manager, you know, wrestlers sound the same. Now we got you this way, I'm that way, because it changed after that. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, it's so – we were so inter- so tightly t- intertwined together, I don't even think people really thought of him as my manager. I mean, they thought it, it was like – I don't know if it was like, it was like Batman and Robin. They, they were like together. They were, they yeah. were, yeah. They, they're inseparable. It's like we depended on seeing y'all together. If y'all weren't exactly. together, it didn't feel right. Yeah, absolutely. And then throw the urn in there. Woo! That was, <laughs> see, that's what, yeah, there's some good shit in that urn. <laughs> Man, I bet it is. You, you, owe, you owe me one shot at that at least. Let me, let me pop the top on that one time. <laughs> Would you never come back? <laughs> <laughs> man, this has been great, man. This has been amazing talking to you, dog. Dude, I could do this all night, man. And uh, I, I'm super excited about these shirts, brother. Everybody, everybody is wearing me out. Me like, too. I can't give enough of them away. I'm like, you know what? I ain't giving no more away. Y'all got to buy. <laughs> that's what I was. That's where I was going. I was like, damn, man, they are, they're for sale. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You know, I, I know you support me, but goddamn, go buy one or two. <laughs> that's all I'm asking. 
Man, you buy me. one, I get you buy one, I give you two. There you go. <laughs> just 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 help the cause a little bit. <laughs> they sent me a couple of boxes to my house. This shit's empty. Gone. They gone. My people my people went through my boxes before me and took mine out. Like, like, wait a minute, I thought this was my box. I'm supposed to take yours out. <laughs> What's that all about, man? Yeah, reverse psychology. <laughs> Man, I tell you what, I, 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 I'm really happy about this. And it, it's just crazy that, you know, that, that this come together the way it did, man. Um, like I said earlier, I, I think it's game recognizing game. And, yes, sir. Uh, you know, and I, I don't ever, you know, I don't ever put my own shit over. But I tell you what, it, it, it says something for you 27 years since doggy style. I mean, it's unheard of, man. And you've crossed over so many, so many different platforms and different genres, and done did different things. Hell, even Corona now. <laughs> you done, you done make Corona cool. I'm working, but, uh, man. I'm but, working. Uh, you know, people just don't understand. You know, to to be to be in your position for that long, man. It's a, uh, it ain't easy, man. And you don't you don't just sit back, and that doesn't just happen without a lot of work and. Uh, I just appreciate, uh, you know, I appreciate the collab together, man. Hey, man, let's do many more. This is the first of, uh, of many to come. I, I think we own the same. Yeah, come on, man. I, we, we we together. We belong with each other, man. Like I say, a lot of my friends really, really love you, man. They love everything about you, like, genuinely. So they happy to see me and you conversing. They've been wanting to see this for a long time. And now that you're able to, you know, spread your wings and get your conversation on, this is this is healthy, healthy food for everybody involved. Yeah, man, we, we we got a lot of we got a lot of work to do, brother. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And, we, and, that, and that don't mean we can't have a little fun while we do it. Hey, man, I don't do nothing unless it's fun. All my jobs That's is fun. What that's all about. <laughs> <laughs> all right, man. Hey, I enjoyed this, brother. Hey, man, thank you. Anytime you need something from me, my door is always open, and I'm gonna leave the back light on for you in case you pull up. Okay, it goes both ways, man. Stay on it like you wanted, and, and y'all make sure y'all go get some of that merchandise, man. That Undertaker Snoop Dogg merchandise is out right now. Stop asking for free and go get you some. Go buy you some. Hello. Go get it. <laughs> All right, man. Be good, love one. Stay safe. Peace. Be cool, brother.